Once upon a time, a good-hearted maiden was forced to work as a servant for her cruel stepsisters and step... Wait, father? Uh, until, with the help of a... beggar, she attends a ball and wins the heart of a prince who must find her again so that he can return her missing... bracelet. Hmm. Prepare yourselves for Cenerentola, the Cinderella Opera. Thanks for joining us on Opera Avengers. I'm Alejandra Martinez, your guide to demystifying opera, an art form created by the people, for the people, and of the people. Today's podcast is brought to you by FreshBooks.com. Manage all of your business's accounting on the cloud. Get your free 30-day trial on www.gofreshbooks.com slash opera. Additional support is brought by Audible.com. Choose from over 180,000 titles to read on your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Receive a free audiobook download and 30-day trial when you visit www.audibletrial.com slash opera. Today, we'll look at Rossini's Cenerentola. As always, this podcast will include spoilers. In opera, there are so many nuances to absorb that knowing the story ahead of time allows you to sit back and enjoy the performance without squinting at subtitles. So think of our podcast as your cheat sheet and be free to enjoy every minute of high-flying opera. Cenerentola is, of course, based on Cinderella, but with obvious changes. Rossini wrote this entire two-act opera in only three weeks, a feat achieved by borrowing some of the music from his previous works, La Gazzetta and The Barber of Seville. Cinderella has been adapted many times, but what sets Rossini's apart is the glaring absence of magic, a fairy tale without fairy godmothers. Rossini intentionally avoided a magical resolution in favor of a character-based finale. Also, special effects were hard to do in the 1800s. Our story begins, once upon a time, in Italy, between the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Angelina is a beautiful young woman with a kind heart, forced to work as a servant for her callous stepfather, Don Magnifico. While Angelina, nicknamed Cenerentola, slaves away, her stepsisters, Clorinda and Thisbe, wear the finest dresses and most expensive jewelry. As she works, Angelina sings about a king who fell in love with a common-born woman, and then married her. There is a knock on the door. A traveling beggar has arrived, asking politely for any food the family can spare. The sisters immediately shoo him away, but Angelina kindly serves him coffee and bread. As the beggar eats, the family is greeted by another arrival. Courtiers announce the arrival of the esteemed Prince Ramiro, who is searching the village to find the prettiest girl in the land to make his bride. The stepsisters can barely contain their excitement. But Prince Ramiro is actually disguised as his own valet. He has devised this pretense so he can observe the women in their natural state. In other words, to see how they behave when they're not trying to impress the prince. Ramiro is instantly smitten with Angelina. Both steal shy glances at each other until her stepsisters call her away. Ramiro then announces the arrival of the prince, actually his valet, Dandini, in disguise. The stepsisters swoon around the false prince. Dandini invites everyone to the ball, but Don Magnifico denies Angelina the chance. Ramiro takes note at how poorly Angelina's family treats her. The beggar asks Don Magnifico about Angelina, but Magnifico insists that he has only two daughters, and the third is dead. Cold. <laughs> Magnifico and his daughters leave with Dandini and Ramiro. Left alone, 
The beggar reveals to Angelina that he is no beggar, but Alidoro, a philosopher who also serves as Prince Almiro's tutor. He recognizes her pure heart and asks if she would like to go to the ball. She says yes. At the palace, Dandini gives Don Magnifico a tour of the wine cellar with the sole intention of getting him drunk. Dandini manages to sneak away and meet with Ramiro. Dandini complains that the stepsisters are idiotic and annoying. Ramiro is confused, having met Angelina, who was anything but an idiot. Speaking of which, the stepsisters interrupt and attempt to steal Dandini away. Dandini instead offers for Ramiro to be their escort. The girls, still thinking Ramiro is a mere valet, scoff at the very idea and insist on remaining with Dandini. Then, Alidoro arrives to announce the new guest, a beautiful woman face hidden by a veil. This, of course, is Angelina, wearing the clothes of a princess provided by Alidoro. Magnifico and the daughters feel uneasy, thinking they might have known her from a past life. With Act One complete, let's take a short break. For those entrepreneurs in the audience, FreshBooks is offering a 30-day free trial to try out their service. FreshBooks provides a new, easier way to send invoices, chart your expenses, and save it all to the cloud. To try FreshBooks free for 30 days, just go to www.gofreshbooks.com slash opera. And for our bibliophiles, audible.com is offering a free audiobook download in addition to a free 30-day trial to test out their library of 180,000 books, including J.R.R. Tolkien's Unabridged The Hobbit. To download your free audiobook, go to www.audibletrial.com slash opera. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash opera for your free audiobook. Now, when Act 2 opens, Don Magnifico is pacing, nervous and threatened by Angelina, who he still doesn't recognize. He demands that his daughters remember him when they marry the prince. No pressure. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ramiro daydreams about Angelina, especially taken with her resemblance to the mystery woman. He then retreats to the shadows to spy on Dandini and Angelina. Dandini courts Angelina and asks for her love in marriage. Angelina is flattered, but she declines, insisting that she is truly in love with his valet, Ramiro, the true prince. As if on cue, Ramiro approaches Angelina, echoing her words of love. She gives him a test to see if he really loves her. She gives him one of her matching bracelets, and then flees the ball, claiming that if he really loves her, then he will find her. So Ramiro gathers his men and orders them to find Angelina. Don Magnifico approaches Dandini and demands that he choose between Clorinda and Thisbe. Dandini reveals that he is merely a valet, but Magnifico, furious, refuses to believe him. Dandini, in return, ejects Magnifico and his daughters from the palace. Back at home, Angelina has returned to her rags and her mundane job of cleaning the fireplace. Don Magnifico and the stepsisters arrive, ordering Angelina to make them dinner. An angry storm rages outside while Angelina prepares dinner. There is a knock at the door. It is Alidoro. During Prince Ramiro's search for the mystery woman, the storm has overturned his carriage. Angelina offers them shelter and prepares a seat at the table for the prince. When Ramiro enters, he immediately recognizes Angelina. He compares his bracelet to hers and declares that she is his true love. The two lovers finally embrace. Magnifico and his daughters are less than thrilled. They protest. Ramiro swears that he will punish their cruelty, but Angelina begs for mercy. They are her family, after all, and she does have a conscience. Later, Ramiro brings Angelina to the palace, where she is crowned a princess. Don Magnifico arrives and asks for her favor. Angelina then declares her only desire, to be recognized as one of his true daughters. He agrees, and finally embraces her as part of the family, 
Angelina then declares that her days as a servant are over, and they all lived happily ever after. on as one of the most famous fairy tales, constantly retold, quite often with a musical element, ranging from the Walt Disney cartoon to Stephen Sondheim's Into the Woods. The tale is ripe for retellings, and Rossini has added his own unique spin to the collection. Still need a Cinderella fix? The Great Lakes Light Opera will perform an original version at the Noble Library in Cleveland Heights on August 19th. Until next month, I'm Alejandra Martinez. Thank you for listening. Opera Avengers is a production of the Great Lakes Light Opera, an organization based out of Cleveland, Ohio, dedicated to bringing opera and all local musical arts to everyone. Today's episode was written by Michael Sayeski. Want to learn more? Visit us at greatlakeslightopera.com. Want to help out? Check our donation page or email us at greatlakeslightopera1 at gmail.com. Oh, and let us know what you'd like to hear next. <laughs>